think I spotted an elusive land cruiser. Crikey, it's a herd. Now the land cruiser feasts on tremendous amount of fuel. And the interesting thing about the Land Rover. Dude. It, oh shoot, I said the wrong thing. They're coming, they're coming. We start our Land Cruiser analysis here in the 2020 200 Series Heritage Edition, and I'm in its most natural environment, which is a, a luxury neighborhood. And that's because this brand new Land Cruiser is $89,000. And you're more likely to see this new model cruising around suburbia and very high-end areas, but it hasn't always been like that. is a collection of parts driving in loose formation because this is a 1977 Toyota FJ40. Really the first Land Cruiser here in the US. And Toyota flew myself and Matt behind the camera out here to Salt Lake City to experience the collection of old and new Land Cruisers. And today we're gonna drive every single version out here off-road, but we have to start with Genesis because this is a truck most people think of when they think of classic Land Cruisers. And let me tell you what, while it may be old and rattly and everything kind of shakes and bangs apart, this is one special rig. Underneath, this has a lot more in common with, well, a wheelbarrow than the new Land Cruiser, if we're being honest, because this competed directly with something like the Jeep CJ. And even though we are on a pretty, well, I should say very tame off-road course, so we don't damage these vehicles, you can tell the ride is not super sublime. We have solid axles, front and rear, mounted on a rigid frame, and that's about it. It is super cramped. I mean, this seat is all the way back and I have to bring my leg up through the steering wheel to use the clutch pedal. I mean, it, it, it physically comes through the steering wheel to use the clutch pedal, but there are direct similarities between this first Land Cruiser and the new one. Take, for example, the rear jump seat. So the rear seats in this fold down from the side and you can draw a direct line between just how well made this vehicle is and the new Land Cruiser because it feels remarkably robust. It doesn't feel delicate at all. I mean, yes, it creaks and it rattles and it bangs, but I feel like I could push this thing pretty hard and it would just take it. It would just keep on cruising, L literally cruising. Toyota people call this Land Cruiser the Iron Pig. And it certainly is one of the most polarizing designs. This Iron Pig 77 Land Cruiser FJ55 is one of the coolest ever made in my opinion. So this is the same era as that 40 series Land Cruiser, but it's four doors with two bench seats. So this is a much more usable vehicle. Now, under the hood, you'll find a 4.2 liter straight six, carbureted straight six with 135 horsepower. And this one, I'll tell you right off the bat, is a lot more comfortable than that 40 series. They've got a tremendous amount of headroom. I feel like I can actually operate the gas, the brake, and the clutch with ease. The steering is incredibly light. And actually, the ride is surprisingly compliant. Now, this is a very rare truck. You never see these trucks anymore. And compared to the ones that came after it, it wasn't nearly as big of a sales success. Now underneath, the FJ55 shares a lot of components with that FJ40, but of course, it's a lot bigger, so you can carry your family, the dog, and all your stuff behind the second row with these, which you definitely have to appreciate. This is a really, really cool truck. And if you like the style, which I personally think is, is, is brilliant, this could be a really fun off-road project if you can find one though, because these just simply disappeared. You don't see any of these FJ55s anymore. You see the 60s, the 80s, and the 100s, but not these old iron pigs. And man, this might just be my favorite one. Oh, 
welcome to the ultimate family truckster because this is a 1984 60 series Land Cruiser. This is the one that took families across the US to Disney World through the decade of Madonna. So let's see what this one's like now. Still has the classic four speed manual transmission like the 55 we just drove. Still has solid axles and leaf springs and body on frame construction, but we do have some improvements like bucket seats and a real dashboard and it doesn't clank and rattle and feel like the 40s anymore. This feels like a real car that you could drive every day and that's because you can. Under the hood there's a 4.2 liter inline 6, 135 horsepower. Now these 60s are carbureted and if I'm being honest they're a little bit slow. They'll top out about 60, 65 on the highway. They don't like to go much faster than that. But if you want to take the back roads to get where you're going, this is the truck to do it in, dead reliable. It's still a carbureted engine, so it doesn't quite feel all that modern, but it's more modern than the 55 we just drove. And it's got some cool 80s touches, like these good old fashioned horn buttons there in the center, and I love these little plastic sliders across the dashboard. It's just so cool, and if you want a manual transmission, but you don't want to live in an analog radio, this is the vehicle to do it in, because the later models are pretty much all automatics, at least here in the US. Oh, welcome to the 1990s, and this is a 1991-80 series, and this is one of the most famous of all the Land Cruisers, because there were a lot of firsts and lasts with this vehicle. So, 80 series Land Cruiser was the very last model with solid axles here in the United States, and it was the start of the luxury-oriented model. So we started to see more luxurious features make their way in, became more comfortable than the 60 series, and a lot more refined. Now this is an early model, so it has a 3FE inline six-cylinder engine, a four-liter, and it only develops 155 horsepower. A lot of people consider this the best of all the Land Cruisers because it has that old school charm and durability. The later ones even had factory diff locks, three diff locks, front, center, and rear. And this is also a full-time four-wheel drive system. So unlike the older models, it's always in four-wheel drive. There's no lever to go from too high to four high to four low. There's just one lever here to engage low range. Then there's a button for the diff lock and off you go. This one is also a 1991, so it has the less desirable 3FE 4 liter straight six. The later ones, the FZJ80s, had a better engine, but this is so cool. This is an early one with cloth seats and no airbag, and this guy has just 70,000 original miles, which, if you know Land Cruisers, is absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. hundred series Land Cruiser and this is if I'm being honest quite similar to the 200 series because oh it is so plush the hundred series is also a very important Land Cruiser because here in the US this was the first of the what I'm gonna call uber luxurious models so no longer was a front solid axle an option this one has independent front suspension. It's also significantly larger than that 80 series it replaced. Once again, got to bring in the R word, refinement. So leather on absolutely everything, leather on the dash. You've got a fairly modern infotainment screen here with buttons down the side. I think it was the first factory Land Cruiser with a V8, 4.7 liter V8 with a timing belt. This is the million mile Tundra engine. So in my opinion, this is the best engine of any Land Cruiser here. These are so bulletproof, but I wouldn't want to take this rock crawling anywhere near as badly as I'd like to take an 80 series rock crawling because it doesn't have the solid axles. It's also not as easy to lift or to modify in a big way, but if I had to start, and I'm going to say this again, crossing continents, this is one of two vehicles I would take because this and the 200 series are by far the most plush, the most comfortable, have the best long distance ride and are probably the best overlanders as well because they just have a ton of space in them. I will say, from a design standpoint, it's not my all-time favorite Land Cruiser. I don't think it's 
quite as exciting to look at as the 80 or the 55 or the 40 or the 60, but it certainly represents good value. You can pick these up for anywhere between like 12 for a kind of a crummy one to maybe 20 for a good one. This is a 2004 with 140,000 miles and it's tight as a drum. I mean, nothing squeaks, nothing rattles. It is so well made. And this brings us back to the 2020 Land Cruiser Heritage Edition, the 200 series. And this vehicle is by far the biggest, the most comfortable, the most refined, and the most expensive of any we have driven today. But it still has that Land Cruiser name on the side, so it can still do this. If you're willing to get your $89,000 Land Cruiser dirty, it'll take it. Because while this may have gotten a little soft in the features department, it's just as robust underneath with a body on frame construction, solid rear axle, and no, it doesn't have big transfer case levers, it's all got electronic, but you simply twist a knob and off you go. Granted, it's a little big and a little heavy for serious rock crawling, but out on this stuff, which is mild trail runs, there's nothing better. If you have to cross a canyon, take a forerunner. If you have to cross a continent, take a Land Cruiser. And for crossing the world, it doesn't get any better than this new 200 series. For 2020, Toyota has released a special limited production run of the 200 series Land Cruiser, and this is it, the Heritage Edition. They're only building 1,200 of them in only two colors, white or that midnight black. Now, what makes them special? In the front, the headlight back in here is now this black instead of chrome. Here on the side, we have a unique set of BBS forged wheels in this really cool bronze. All Heritage Edition models have this pretty cool roof cage made by Yakima. For Heritage Edition models, they actually went away with the third row, so the jump seats are gone, and Toyota says this is to make room for extra stuff for off-roading and overlanding. There's also a unique cargo mat down here with a little itty-bitty Land Cruiser crawling up the side. And by far the coolest thing to me and videographer Matt has to be this badge right here because this is a Heritage Edition badge. This looks like something straight off the 40 series. It's basically actually the same design and it distinguishes this limited edition Heritage model from the standard version. There is no longer a cold box in the center console. On a regular one, this area would be a fridge. Not on this Heritage Edition. Once again, they wanted to save weight, add a little bit of space. I almost kind of feel like though they're decontenting it, but charging more. What do you think in the comment section below? Now nothing out here is gonna be too difficult because Toyota's not gonna let us crazy journalists damage their Land Cruiser, but we do have a little bit of a rough, kind of loose climb here. So I stuck it in low range. I'm gonna lock the center diff and just gonna crawl up and see if this monstrous 5.7 liter beast can pull its way up. Another cool thing I can dial in on this 200 series Land Cruiser is the multi-terrain select or MTS. So I can tell the vehicle what kind of off-roading I'm doing, be it rock, rock and dirt, mogul, loose rock, or mud and sand. Now, we're on some loose rock, so that's the one I've selected, and that should get us through this obstacle course. It's time to crown a victor of my favorite Land Cruiser. Now, the 40 and the 55 are so much fun to drive, great off-road, but they're just a little too small for my six foot one tall frame. I just can't bring the seat back far enough. The 100 and 200 are beautifully made, and if I had to cross a thousand miles on dirt, you can bet I'd take one of those. But for an all-around fun off-roader, maybe even a daily, it's gotta be the 60 series because it's a great mix of the old school nostalgia, but the new school size. I like the 80 a lot as well, but the manual transmission in this just makes it so much more fun. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below which Land Cruiser you've seen today is your favorite.